Hi everyone. I've introduced myself as a food blogger enough to know the reaction some of you are resisting right about now. I get it. I embarrassingly stand on my chair in the middle of a restaurant to get a good picture of food. I take borderline inappropriate boomerangs of egg yolks and I post them on the internet. I am a food blogger and for those of you that may not know what that means, I develop recipes, take pictures of them, create videos for them, and I post them on my blog and on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and YouTube. I didn't grow up dreaming of having my own food blog. I entered this profession because of a weird twist of events that I never saw coming. Things will go wrong in your life, uncontrollable events will happen, and there will be a ripple effect that follows. I didn't end up here because my plan worked out. I'm standing here talking to you because things went off course, and I did my best to embrace and navigate the ripples that came after. I am a food blogger and I am part of a new wave of entrepreneurs that's disrupting a major global market and chiseling out a piece for ourselves. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let me give you a little backstory. I met my husband in college. It was love at first sight for him. I, on the other hand, <laughs> rejected his advances, <laughs> rolled my eyes at his jokes and found him to be a bit much. Then, one beautiful day, he made me laugh, and the rest is history. Jared enjoys eating salad. He never misses a morning run. He has a 20-story threshold before he even considers taking an elevator. I, on the other hand, am a second piece of cake kind of gal. We graduated college, moved to a small apartment in Philadelphia. I worked a couple jobs, and then I started law school. My husband started medical school, and we had what was arguably the most fun wedding of all time. You know when you have your life pretty mapped out? There's this sweet spot where you have a plan, you're on a path, and you're trucking along. You know exactly where you are and where you're headed. That was me. I was pretty comfortable. But shortly before our first wedding anniversary, my husband started feeling off. He was having a hard time finishing those morning runs. He was eating a ton, but losing weight. And he had to stop during his bike rides to chug water. One day, he walked into the emergency room at Temple Hospital, where he was working, and he asked them to take his blood sugar. He was immediately admitted. He was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It was particularly crazy because people are usually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in childhood. And so this diagnosis in his 20s was a shock. It was a huge adjustment for us. There was growing pains, there were days of frustration, days of mourning a more carefree life. And not only did he have to deal with this whole new world of blood sugars and insulin and finger pricks and pumps, but he also had to deal with a support system, me, that didn't know how to cook for him. Along with this diagnosis, we had to change our lifestyle a bit, which meant embracing a lower carb diet in order to control his blood sugars. This low-carb thing was foreign territory to me. I had this battle with mealtime that I just could not get peace with. And so I did what most people do. I Googled it. I searched and searched and searched the internet, Pinterest, food blogs, anything that could give me an easy fix, an easy weeknight meal, something, anything, and I was disappointed. I couldn't find recipes that incorporated the wholesome ingredients and flavors we craved, but fit within our newfound dietary criteria. So I started experimenting on my own. I made recipes uniquely for us, recipes that we loved and obsessed over. And I began to think that if the internet had failed me in my search for the recipes that we needed, it was probably failing a heck of a lot of other people too. At the same time, I had graduated law school, I passed the bar, and I became a mom to two perfectly crazy little boys. I was at a point in my life where I was having a hard time balancing the requirements of a traditional professional career and the daily roller coaster of raising humans. So after spending countless hours telling myself why I shouldn't, I took a leap. That leap was creating my food blog. I'm not going to lie, I had no idea what I was doing. I took dimly lit pictures in my South Philly kitchen I had never even heard about search engine optimization. 
And my friend Marcy had to teach me what a hashtag was. I worked on my food blog any chance I got. I woke up an hour before my kids to work on it. I created recipes during their nap times. And I typed up blog posts at night after they went to bed. As I invested more time learning about food photography, posted recipes consistently, and communicated with my readers to see what they needed from me most, things began to click. My Instagram began to grow. My blog page views were on the incline. And I even had people sign up for my newsletter, which to me is the ultimate commitment. What I didn't realize was that Humble Food Blog three plus years ago was part of a bigger story. A story of women entrepreneurs pursuing their passions and modernizing the marketing landscape to fit the new generation consumer. Bloggers and influencers like me creating content that we're passionate about have not only built an audience and a community that's looking for their new favorite recipe, they're also looking for product recommendations from their favorite bloggers. Because we learn about products from our peers, from social media, and from native advertising. And catching on to this new era, brands are paying closer attention to social media in their marketing strategy. They find bloggers they like, bloggers that align with their brand, brand values, and they work together to create content to build buzz and awareness around their products. 2017 was the first year that digital ad spending finally beat out traditional TV. With video streaming and the rise of ad blockers, the traditional TV commercial isn't appealing to younger generations. As these consumers turn to their phones, digital ad spending is only expected to grow. On Instagram, $570 million was spent on influencer marketing, which is a space not only dominated, but largely geared towards women. But why are brands paying so much attention to the female consumer? Well, it's reported that 85% of all consumer purchases are made by women. And almost 90% of women turn to social media to research a product before they make a purchase. Not only are women leading the way in influencer marketing, they're also bringing home the biggest paychecks. A talent manager noted that when you compare a male influencer with a similar size Instagram following to a female, the female would easily earn 50% more. So what is with this disparity? Well, women tend to be more engaged on social media than men. And brands aren't just looking for a big follower number. They're also looking for an engaged and enthusiastic audience. I think it's the relationship that female bloggers cultivate with their readers that enables their business and their blogs to grow. My food blog is a 24-7 commitment. Not all the hours are hard, but not all the hours are fun either. What keeps me going is each reader email, each real life hug, each person telling me that mealtime was a little bit easier or more enjoyable or fun again because of my recipes. I haven't lost sight of the fact that I am here for and because of my readers. Women aren't just entering the blogging world because they're more active on social media. Women are finding their way to this space because we live in a world where good maternity leave is scarce, the next promotion is gender biased, equal pay is still a battle, and workplace harassment is. Women like me, craving flexibility, the power to determine our own paychecks, and the freedom from restraints of a tra traditional office, we are going out on our own to build a business for ourselves. Three and a half years ago, I took a leap, and I didn't fully understand where I was going to land. I entered a space that is ever evolving and ripe with opportunity. My story is unique to me, but the theme is recurring with many bloggers and influencers out there. We all took a leap, and whether we realize it or not, we redefined a major market to fit modern day needs. What I love most about this field is the barrier to enter is low. I have blogger friends from all walks of life, different backgrounds, different ages, <coughs> whoops, different countries. No matter what plan you made, what path you're on, what uncontrollable events happened in your life, you have a device in your pocket that enables you to start something new. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of work that comes after, but literally anyone can start. Thank you.